In this lecture, we are going to discuss the situation when the transversality condition fails. The outline for the lecture is as follows. First we discuss uh, failure of transversality condition and its consequences, what can be expected in when there is a failure of transversality condition. Then we look at illustrative examples where transversality condition fails. These there are two examples, they illustrate the two possibilities that we can uh, conclude in the case when transversality condition fails. And then we look back at the three examples which were motivating examples. Uh, which were dealt in lecture 2.1. It was a Cauchy problem, three Cauchy problems for the same differential equation, same PDE, uh, wherein we saw one has exactly one solution, other Cauchy problem has infinitely many solutions and the third one had no solutions. So, we are going to analyze those examples in the light of this failure of transversality condition. In the proof of existence and uniqueness theorem, the transversality condition played an important role in both existence and uniqueness assertions in proving both of them. So therefore, it is natural to ask what happens if transversality condition is not satisfied. We expect that the Cauchy problem may not have a solution because that is existence is violated, no existence. Second aspect is uniqueness is violated that means it has more than one solution or it may still have one and only one solution. Are you surprised? No need to surprise because the theorem uh, if you remember the assumption of transversality condition was only a sufficient condition under that condition we have proved existence and uniqueness. So, if the sufficient condition is not satisfied still we may have existence of a unique solution. I would like to recall your attention to uh, one of the very important ordinary differential equation problem. Let me write that equation y dash equal to uh, y sin 1 by y obviously when y is not 0 and uh, 0 when y equal to 0 that is to be expected and then uh, y of 0 equal to 0. So, this initial value problem Okay. Uh, the theorem that we have is a Peano's theorem and cauchy lipschitz picard's theorem. When we apply Peano's theorem, yes the right hand side is a continuous function, therefore there is no problem, it has a solution. Now the right hand side is not a Lipschitz function that you can check it. Uh, because not Lipschitz, cauchy lipschitz picard theorem cannot be applied and uniqueness be concluded, we cannot do that. So therefore we can expect that maybe there is more than one solution. In ODEs it so happens that when you have two different solutions for the same initial problem there are infinitely many solutions actually. So that is the only possibility. So you have no solution or one solution or infinitely many solutions. These are the only possibilities for ODEs. Now here it so happens this problem the right hand side is not a Lipschitz function. This is not local ellipses. If you call this as f of y there is no y depend x dependence so I do not write. So this is a locally not local ellipses. It is not locally ellipses. Therefore, we cannot apply the theorem, but still it so happens this has a unique solution. So, that uh, I leave it for you if you have not come across this uh, question already, please uh, look at it and show that uh, solution is unique. So, violation of sufficient condition means nothing, no conclusions can be drawn. That is why you may still have one and only one solution, it can happen. Okay. So, if the transversality condition is not satisfied and a solution to the Cauchy problem is expected that means you the Cauchy problem has a solution then something should happen. The datum curve must necessarily have a characteristic direction at each of its points which means that uh, it is a characteristic curve. Uh, now we have a result lemma 1 it is a very simple result. Let z equal to ux y be an integral surface corresponding to the Cauchy problem for quasi linear equation QL uh, containing a part of the datum curve which is called gamma dash 
that corresponds to you see gamma corresponds to s belongs to i gamma dash corresponds to s belongs to i dash where i dash is a sub interval. Now take a point on gamma dash and denote j 0 s uh, is the precisely the uh, determinant which comes in transversality condition a b here f dash g dash a b is the uh, tangential direction for the base characteristic curve at uh, base characteristic curve passing through the point f s g s but because it is quasi linear it is tied up with the value h s also f prime g prime is the tangential direction to the base characteristic curve not sorry not base characteristic curve to projection of gamma which is gamma 2 it is a tangent for that. <coughs> conclusions if j of 0 s naught is 0 that means that determinant is 0 at one point then the datum curve has a characteristic direction at that point. What does that mean? Uh, datum curve has characteristic direction at s naught. What is characteristic direction at s naught? A p naught, b p naught, c p naught because p naught is the point f s naught, g s naught, h s naught. And uh, what is the saying the datum curve has a characteristic direction? It is tangent which is f prime s naught g prime s naught h prime s naught that triple is proportional to a b c. And if it is 0 j 0 s is 0 for every s in a sub interval i dash then gamma dash is a characteristic curve for the quasi linear equation. Uh, proof of 1. So, j 0 s naught is given to be 0 right and we want to show that uh, datum curve has a characteristic direction at that point p naught. So, j 0 s naught is 0 if and only if this is just expansion of the determinant a b one column f prime g prime the other column that determinant is precisely the left hand side that is equal to 0. Since u is a solution to quasi linear equation and h s equal to u of f s g s holds we know this we have let us compute this c p naught g prime minus b p naught h prime what is cp naught from the equation a u x plus b u y equal to c therefore that cp naught is equal to this quantity in the brackets a u x plus b u y at the respective points a and b are a b and u x u y are evaluated into g prime s naught minus b p naught into h prime s naught how do i get h prime s naught from here differentiate this with respect to s take s equal to s naught that will give you this by chain rule u x f prime plus u y g prime. Now, that is equal to after simplification is this, but here you observe this thing in the bracket is precisely the left hand side with a minus sign. So, that is 0 therefore, this is 0. So, this proves 1. So, 1 uh, is a we have proved on the last slide that gamma has a characteristic direction at the point phi 0. Proof of 2 from 1 we conclude that gamma dash is a characteristic curve if j 0 s equal to 0 for all s in i prime. What is the part 1 says whenever j 0 s equal to 0 and you have a solution then that has to be characteristic curve that, that uh, it, the datum curve has characteristic direction at that point. But in this case it happens for s in i dash. Therefore, gamma dash is a characteristic curve that is the definition of a characteristic curve. If j 0 s equal to 0 for all s then by lemma gamma itself is a characteristic curve. So, when such a thing happens the Cauchy problem is called characteristic Cauchy problem. The Cauchy problem where the datum curve is a characteristic curve that is called a characteristic Cauchy problem. Now we have uh, lemma 2 this is what uh, is the result which says what happens when uh, transversality conditions what is to be expected of uh, solutions on how many in number. So, consider the Cauchy problem for q l such that for every s j is 0. Okay. Conclusions take a point in gamma if gamma is a characteristic curve. Okay, then there exists infinite number of integral surfaces infinite number which contain a part of the datum curve gamma 
containing the point P0 that is always there right local solution we have been talking about. So, this will always be there, but here the interesting thing infinite number of integral surfaces if gamma is a characteristic curve. The earlier lemma one said if you have a solution then curve gamma must be characteristic curve if the j is identically equal to 0. Now, this is opposite kind of converse if j is 0 throughout and gamma is a characteristic curve then not only there is a solution, but actually infinite number of solutions exists. And if gamma does not have a characteristic direction at any of its points then no solution Cauchy problem does not admit a solution. Note in this theorem we are assuming that j is 0 throughout for all s in i. So, how do we show infinitely many solutions exist? What we do is this let v denote v1 v2 v3 denote the tangential direction to gamma at the point P0. So, imagine this is your gamma this point is P0 this is the tangential direction which is ok this one. <coughs> Now, choose any direction w such that the set v1, v2 and w1, w2 this is in R2 is linearly independent in R2. We will see in a moment why this we are assuming this. Is it possible to choose? Yes, it is possible to choose because once you know v1, v2 that is after all one vector in R2 you can find infinitely many such vectors w1, w2 so that this set is linearly independent and w3 you can simply add to that there is no condition on w3 the only condition is on w1 w2 and v1 v2. So, it can be done in fact infinitely many ways you can do this that is the reason why we are going to get infinite many solutions we will see that. So, choose any curve gamma tilde in omega 3 that is we had a gamma we had a point p0 where we had some tangential direction. Now, what we are asking is choose anybody else tangent has to be different uh, something like that. This is this is another curve in fact, it can be a curve it can be a straight line as well we, we are going to see that suppose a curve you take no problem. So, this is gamma tilde take any curve gamma tilde in omega 3 through the same point P0 such that the tangent to gamma dash at P naught is in the direction of W that one easy way of ensuring that is to take straight line. So, you have gamma here this is the point P0. So, you take some curve oh no I do not want to take curve So, you had a gamma you had a point P0 and here uh, through P0 you fix a direction W and you take a line that is it a line passing through P0 with the direction W that is simply given by P0 plus some parameter alpha times W ok this is the vector form of the line right. So, of course, the tangent will be the direction W. So, as a consequence j gamma tilde p0 will be non-zero because on one hand you had f prime g prime right earlier and here you had that a b because of that you got things 0. Now, you have taken somebody who is lead, so this was 0 earlier that, that means f prime g prime is proportional to a b. Now, I replace this with a new thing w 1 w 2 this will be non-zero. Okay, because this is not linearly independent this sorry w1 w2 v1 v2 are linearly independent therefore as a consequence w1 w2 and f prime s not g prime s not the both these columns are linearly independent so determinant is going to be non zero now i can apply existence uniqueness theorem so what happened is that initially we had a curve gamma there was some problem because j was zero we could not apply the existence uniqueness theorem then we chose another curve gamma tilde for which existence theorem can be applied as a consequence we get a, a kind of surface ok which contains a part of this gamma tilde and as a consequence a part of gamma will also be there 
because that is that is a characteristic curve. So, the surface is called S tilde that contains a part of gamma also because gamma is a characteristic curve. So, tangent plane at P naught to S tilde contains two vectors V and W. V is there because the curve gamma is there on the surface and V is a tangential direction basically it is a characteristic direction at P naught and W is also there in the tangent plane. So, in fact, the tangent plane is given by the subspace of R3 spanned by the two vectors V and W that is the tangent space and tangent plane will be at the point P0, origin will be at P0. So, we have got that. So, there are infinite number of directions W having the property that V1, V2, W1, W2 is linearly independent, we already saw this. Therefore, we get an infinite number of integral surfaces such that a part of gamma lies on each of them the part might vary from surface to surface. All of these integral surface are pairwise distinct because the tangent planes are having different directions. Okay, the orientation of the tangent, of course tangent plane is always a two dimensional quantity, but uh, it will be changing. One guy who is always be there in that direct direction in the tangent plane is the direction of the characteristic direction. But the other direction is the W, if you as you change W two planes are not same. You have infinitely many solutions because you have infinitely many choices for W. So, second uh, proof of second one assume that there is a solution. Then by lemma 1 datum curve must be a characteristic curve and we have assumed it does not it is not a character not only it is not a characteristic curve it has it does not have a characteristic direction at any of its points that is a hypothesis of path 2 of lemma 2. So, it contradicts therefore, Cauchy problem does not admit a solution. So, this completes the proof of 2. Now, we are going to illustrate these two conclusions of lemma 2 with the two examples. The first example we are going to consider is this equation x u x plus y u y equal to 2 u u x 0 equal to x square is the Cauchy data given for x positive. Okay, let us start solving. So, first thing is you need to parameterize the Cauchy data which is this x equal to s y equal to 0 z equal to square. Then we have to write down the characteristic differential equations which is this. Now, we have to solve this with initial conditions so that time t equal to 0 this uh, it passes through points of gamma. So, this is the initial conditions. Solutions are very simple, one can write this. Equations are linear equations, right? dx by dt equal dx. So, solution is constant times e power t, here also constant times e power t, here constant times e power 2 t. What that constant uh, turns out to be coming from this initial data. So, these are the solutions. Now, what is the next step uh, that the existence uniqueness theorem told us? Using the first two equations uh, namely for x equal to x t s and y equal to y t s express t as a function of x y and s as a function of x y go and substitute in the third one and propose your solution. If all is well that is going to be your solution and here we cannot express explicitly you can see x equal to s e power t y equal to 0 there is no way you can solve for both s and t from this. But suddenly we see that a hey, we look at the third one that is s square e power 2 t that is s e power t is whole square therefore, z equal to x square as solution we have an i for a solution maybe huh? and tempted to declare that my solution is going to be u x y equal to x square. Okay? It solves a Cauchy problem of course, we can substitute and see it actually solves, but who guaranteed that this will be a solution because you have not done the application of the theorem because if you want to apply the theorem you have to check that the transversality condition is met, you have not done that. So, somehow you guessed luckily it is working that is it. Can you give me one more, can you say this is the only solution? We do not know. Okay. So, this question is still to be settled. So, let us go, go through uh, formally, go through the theorem to know that if a solution exists or not, we have to rely on the theorem. Look at the Jacobian that is 0 everywhere. 
So I cannot apply the theorem. So anything can happen. Now can we conclude something from lemma 2? Gamma is a characteristic curve, one can check. It just means one slightly one more thing you have to check. What is the tangential direction to gamma and what is the characteristic direction at this point? Both will be proportional. Please check that. The lemma 2 asserts the existence of infinitely many solutions. Done. Let us find some of them. Yeah, theorem says infinitely many. Theorem also gives an algorithm which can be implemented. We will do that. So, take a point on gamma, say this point P. I do not really need to put S naught, so I just put S. All of us know that S is fixed in this, right? The point P naught is fixed. This is how a typical point looks on gamma S0, S square. Fix a W such that W1, W2 and 1, 0. What is 1, 0? It is that V1, V2. That is 1, 0 in this example. That is linearly dependent, independent. Done. Now take gamma tilde as this. This, if you see, is just a straight line passing through the point P having the direction W. P, I have used a zeta here, W. If you write in component form, this is what you get. Okay. Yes, P is what? Yes, 0, S square plus zeta. W1, W2, W3. So, if you expand, you will get this. So, it is a straight line passing through P having the direction W. In fact, we may take W equal to 0, 1, W3. Okay? That means, I am setting W1 equal to 0, W2 equal to 1. Why is that? Because what you want to show? Infinitely many solutions. Even now, suppose I show for each such W there is a solution, do we still have infinitely many? Yes, because W3 is still arbitrary, W3 is an R. One can do much more, but I am already showing infinitely many solutions. There are many more solutions also. Solution of the characteristic system of ODE satisfying these initial conditions, which are now based on gamma tilde, is given by x equal to SET. S e power t y equal to zeta e power t z equal to s square plus zeta w 3 into e power 2 t. Now we can express t and s in terms of x and y as follows t equal to capital T of x y equal to log x by s and zeta is equal to s y by x. Please note that s is fixed as far as gamma tilde is concerned. Substituting in the expression for z of t s, we obtain the solution as u tilde of x y equal to x square that is s square into e power 2 t is x square plus s y by x that is the zeta here into w 3 w 3 into e to the power 2 t which is x by s whole square it comes from here. So, on simplification the solution u tilde becomes x square plus w 3 x y by s. Solution to the Cauchy problem with datum curve gamma tilde was obtained as this on the previous slide u tilde of x y is x square plus w 3 x y by s. Please note this is not one solution this is infinitely many solutions because there is a arbitrary w 3 in the formula. So, with the choice of w equal to 0, 1, w 3, gamma tilde takes the form we introduce gamma tilde with respect to w 1, w 2, w 3, but we made a choice that w will be 0, 1, w 3. Therefore, gamma tilde looks like this x equal to s, y equal to zeta, z equal to s square plus zeta w 3, zeta belongs to uh, real numbers. Observe that u tilde of s zeta that is substitute x equal to s and y equal to zeta you get s square plus zeta w 3. But what is s square plus zeta w 3? It is this the z coordinate. What is s and, z, s and zeta? They are x and y coordinates respectively. It means that the entire gamma tilde lies on the surface s tilde. Does that surprise you? Because the applying existence and uniqueness theorems gives us only uh, for zeta nearby 0 that uh, gamma tilde lies on s tilde. 
it should not surprise because the existence and uniqueness theorem is a very general one, it is applicable for all sorts of Cauchy problems and what we are working with here is a specific Cauchy problem therefore the solution can behave better. Next question is actually can we apply the theorem? Of course, we have solved and got this expression for u tilde of x y is the theorem itself applicable. Recall our original problem is a characteristic Cauchy problem where we had this determinant right this S0 corresponds to a and b and this corresponds to original f prime and g prime and that was 0 for all s. So, it was a characteristic Cauchy problem. Then what we did? is that this continues to be a 0, now we change to gamma tilde. When we change to gamma tilde, what is the corresponding f dash g dash? That is w1 w2 which is 0 1 which is equal to s and which is not equal to 0 because we are in the region s greater than 0. So, the theorem is applicable and that will give you as you know local solutions with respect to the datum curve. But however, we have obtained here by the computations we see that we indeed have a global solution with respect to the datum curve. Observe that u tilde of x0 equal to x square also holds. What does that mean? That means that the entire gamma lies on s tilde. That means our original datum curve itself lies on s tilde. So, not all these solutions are also global with respect to domain. They are in fact defined on R2. Okay, they are defined in R2. So, there are infinitely many solutions. Now, let us look at the second example. This I think we already solved using Lagrange's method ux plus ui equal to 1. If not, let us do again. Uh, let us do now. So, the characteristic system of ODE is dx by z equal to dy by 1 equal to dz by 1. So, integrating this set of equations we get this x minus z square by 2 equal to c 1. The other one will give you y minus z equal to c 2. Therefore, Lagrange method says f of c 1 c 2 equal to 0. That means take any arbitrary function f and this equal to 0. Of course, it remains that uh, this is valid for only those x y z for which they, uh, this kind of quantity this tuple uh, lies in the domain of f that is always there. Second thing is that you should be able to solve for z in terms of x and y. Only then I would like to call this as a solution. Okay, that is done. Now we will substitute c1, c2. So now I think we will find the f using the Cauchy data. That should fix the f. Then we'll get the solution. That's the idea. Whether we'll be successful or not, we will see. So, x equal to s square y equal to 2 s z equal to s, uh, this quantity equal to c 1, substitute for x equal to s square and uh, z is equal to s, you get this. So, that will give you s square equal to 2 c 1. Now, from the other one y minus z equal to c 2, when you substitute the values for y and z, you get s equal to c 2. Therefore, there is a relation between c 2 and c 1 that we get c 2 square equal to 2 c 1. So, we are going to substitute for c2 whatever that y minus z and c1 this. That gives a quadratic equation for z. When solved, we get this expression y plus r minus root 4x minus y square by 2. Now, gamma 2 the projection of datum curve lies on this curve of 4x minus 4x equal to y square. Therefore, this function is not differentiable because whenever 4x minus y square is 0, there is trouble square root function is not differentiable. So, u is not differentiable at any point of gamma 2. Therefore, Cauchy problem has no solution whatever we have obtained. Now, using method of characteristics, we will attempt to solve the same problem again. So, we have to uh, write the parametric form of gamma done. Then system of characteristic ODE is this. Now, we have to solve this with initial data this so that uh, at t equal to 0 the characteristic curve lies on the datum curve done. When we solve this is the expression we get for x, y and z. So, to know if a solution exists, we have to rely on the existence and uniqueness theorem because it is not obvious whether I can, I can uh, use the equation for x and y and get an expression for t and s. So, let me do that. 
Jacobian is this, it is 0. So, Jacobian is 0. Therefore, existence theorem cannot be applied. Now, what does lemma 2 ask? It asks whether it is a characteristic curve. If it is a characteristic curve, answer is infinitely many solutions. So, we check what is a, is it a characteristic curve or not. The characteristic direction at any point on gamma is the ABC that is S11, but tangential direction is 2S2, 1. So, both are not uh, proportional, they are not parallel. Okay? So, therefore, uh, therefore, gamma is not a characteristic curve. Therefore, the second part says you do not have solution. Conclusion 2 of lemma 2 says it has no solution. Okay, now, let us go back to the three examples that we were discussing in lecture 2.1 that is this recall the PDE was ux equal to cu in fact, it is like ODE there is no t dependence and then Cauchy data 1, 2, 3 Cauchy data 1 had unique solution note where is it prescribed? It is prescribed on the t axis while Cauchy data for 2 and 3 are prescribed on the x axis in one case you have infinitely many solutions in the other case there are no solutions. Then we ask this question why they behave differently, PDs are same and on T axis you have uniqueness, on X axis you may have many or no solutions. Then we had this question who is special, is it T axis or X axis and we said answers later, now it is a time for answers. Cauchy problem 1, J0S, yes. so we are trying to use lemma 2 and try to answer. J0s is 1, therefore, we have existence uniqueness theorem, therefore, uniqueness is what you expect, done. It is in tune with the assertion of existence uniqueness theorem. Now, second Cauchy problem, uh, we had J0, now the question is, is it a characteristic curve or not? So, transversality condition is not satisfied, fine. At every point on gamma, the characteristic direction is uh, f prime g prime h prime which is equal to 1 0 c into e power c s and it coincides with the tangential direction. Therefore, it is a characteristic curve therefore, there are infinitely many solutions that is what lemma 2 also says. Cauchy problem 3 j is 0. So, we ask whether the curve gamma is a characteristic curve or not, it is not a characteristic curve. So, the conclusion 2 of lemma 2 says no solution. So, that is the thing. Here transversality condition is satisfied, so we do not far go further. Here we check gamma is a characteristic curve because ABC is this, F prime G prime H prime is this. And here gamma does not have characteristic direction anywhere, therefore no solutions. This is a characteristic Cauchy problem, we have infinitely many solutions. The transversality, transversality condition is not satisfied for both Cauchy problems 2 and 3. Datum curve turned out to be a characteristic curve in the case of Cauchy problem 2. That is why we had infinitely many solutions. Datum curve is not a characteristic curve for the Cauchy problem 3 therefore, no solution. Now, let us answer the other part, uh, which axis is special, T or X and Y? Special things have to be handled carefully. So, you answer for yourself for this question, because the answer lies in special things have to be handled carefully. Something is not special does not matter, you give anything you want, no, there is no problem. So, existence uniqueness theorem asserted existence of a unique solution for Cauchy problem if transversality condition is satisfied, denote the corresponding Jacobian as J0S0. If this is non-zero, then it will be non-zero for S belonging to an interval containing S0 for the reasons that things are involved in the determinant are continuous functions of S and determinant itself is a continuous function. So, given the local nature of the assertions in existence and uniqueness theorem, the following cases exhaust all the possibilities in, in when the transversality condition fails at S0. J vanishes at all points of an inter of some interval containing S0, 
nearby S0 is what we are worried about. On some interval j is 0 or it does not vanish at any point of some interval containing S0 except at S0 that is the isolated point in some interval in rest of the points of the interval j is not vanishing but only at S0 it vanishes or it can happen like this kind of limit point. You find a sequence of Sn such that j is 0 at the point j0 Sn and Sn goes to S0 otherwise it is not 0. Okay, imagine a function like uh, uh, x sin 1 by x uh, 0 is a limit point of zeros of this function something like that. Now lemma 2 answered the cases 1 and uh, when the case 1 happens when j is identically equal to 0 on some interval containing S0 and theory seems to be elusive uh, when situation 2 or 3 occurs one has to look from case to case and make conjectures and I do not think uh, there is any complete theory available written in a textbook. So let us summarize, we have learned how to solve a Cauchy problem using method of characteristics. We have understood what may happen if transversality condition is not satisfied and uh, in the next uh, lecture we solve some more problems from first order partial differential equations up to quasi linear equations and then we will move on to general nonlinear equations or general equations later on. Thank you.